What's up, man? My name's Jeff Lanimal, and I just want to say welcome to uh, LA. I'm a huge fan. I've been watching you for a very long time. I don't know even know how many vlogs I've actually seen. So I saw your vlog, got the news that you were moving to California. I don't know if I'm going to miss it more than you. I'm really going to miss that studio. And I know that you're moving here for all the right reasons. I get it. I'm originally from the South Shore of Massachusetts myself, and I know you're a Connecticut boy, but I want to cordially invite you because nobody has. Welcome to Los Angeles, man. Welcome to New Beginnings. It's gonna be sick. A Little bit of what I do, I'm actually a luxury real estate agent in Hollywood Hills. And not only is the vlog obviously a welcome to you to Los Angeles to let you know who I am, but to pay homage to exactly what you do, create. I think that every little thing in our lives happens for a reason. And so doing these vlogs for what I do in luxury real estate, uh, you know, showing the houses and actually all the hot spots in LA, I wanna say thank you, because if it wasn't for the video content creation that you've been doing for so many years, I wouldn't have gotten the inspiration myself to pick up a camera and start shooting. And it just so happens that being a luxury real estate agent, this is a niche. Nobody does this. And to tell you the truth, it's actually funny to me because that's what branding and marketing is all about. It's that personality, that storytelling, and what better way to do it than guerrilla vlogging. So I really think with the mixture of lu doing luxury real estate and having guerrilla vlogging such like this, your style really brings in a competitive edge because nobody does it. They're either too scared to do it in front of the camera. They lack the initiative to learn all this stuff, the editing, the shooting, the lighting. I think it could really hold a lot of people back from doing great things. Yeah, so this is why I started vlogging to create this niche on having, you know, that, that difference between everybody else that, you know, does the traditional style marketing. And your inspiration actually brought that into it. So it's great to be able to go through these houses. Hey, look who it is. Peter Lormore. Well, good lord, look who it is. <laughs> Jeff Landerville. We're vlogging in the same house. Well, you know why? Because it's your house? My house, but it's my listing, <laughs> and a beautiful listing of that. Thank too, you very much. This is so weird. I feel like we're at like a Mexican standoff. <laughs> well, this is actually a perfect opportunity. Let me too. do this so so uh, so we can both get it in. Both, that's <laughs> mental. So this is actually a perfect opportunity to sit down with you. This I'm doing this vlog for Casey Neistat. You are freaking joking me. No, seriously, yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is a this guy, huge inspiration to me too. My boss broker from PLG Estates, Mr. Peter Lormore. And since you're here, why don't we have a chat on vlogging, on the importance of video content? So if this is, I don't know which, I guess we'll put the cameras together. I don't yeah, know which camera to look at. <laughs> so if this is going out to Casey, if Casey, if you actually see this, firstly, you ruined my life <laughs> because now all I do is vlog. <laughs> also made my life immeasurably better <laughs> because it was the game changer that uh, changed my business and right. changed the company of which Jeff now works at my company right. and is an amazing agent so <laughs> major props awesome major man. props all right let's get into it you, sir. all right let's, let's do, it. do it let's chop it up so yes, sir. before the vlogging for the uh, speaking at seminars traveling the world the Netflix show <clears throat> You were in the music business, and you were pretty successful in the music business. I was, I was. What were some of the uh, some of the accomplishments, or some of the, the goals, or stepping stones that you made before you switched over to real estate? Fantastic question, and I'm going to come back to it in one second. I first of all want to thank Jeff for having me on. Oh yeah, absolutely. We worked together, which is awesome, and and frankly, I don't know any other real estate company in <laughs> California that would be doing this. Leaping. Is, is a big part of, of life. It's something that I forced myself to do a long time. So when I was in, I come from a town like yours. I come from an industrial, uh, smaller town. And so I kind of dropped out of high school, went to London at 15, maybe 16 years old to become a record producer. Didn't know a soul. Within two years, had my first hit, culminating in approximately 50 number ones in the Billboard dance charts and the British Music Week dance charts, which are the official club charts. It, I was kind of at the top of my game. I knew that MP3s were going to smash the industry. So I elected to literally hang up my headphones one night and become a real estate investor the next. That's such a shit. Yeah. In careers too as well. And it was terrifying. Right. If it ain't scary, then it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Fast forward, you've had so much success in real estate to the point of you know being a top producer in your brokerage, then becoming a broker owner. Where do you think video content creation and stuff like this, like vlogs like this and, and piece of content that you create, how much of an impact has that had on your business? 
immeasurable. I discovered uh, Casey and I had a massive aha moment because I discovered Gary Vee, I discovered Grant Cardone, but I'm much more of a kind of, you know, pop culture kind of guy and, and I'm not particularly serious all the time. I like a good giggle. Yeah. And so when I saw Casey, I was incredibly inspired. Frankly, you know, Casey taught me and tens of thousands of other vloggers right. how to vlog. Instead of you having a big, shiny, professional rig like this one, I'm gonna take a leaf out of Casey's book and today is gonna be Vlogging on a budget. I watched what you did, I looked at the music. You know, in the beginning I was super influenced by you, but now what's happened is it's kind of gone off into my own flavor. Right. And I, and I love it, but I kind of went to, my film school was Casey. I literally would sit there and watch hundreds if not, probably over a thousand, because you have so many videos, I've watched so much of it. And when I do- That's just in the past week, by the way. <laughs> and when I do consume your content, I look at it in a different aspect and I kind of look at it now when I consume any kind of content. Not only do I kind of like one part of my brain is uh, absorbing the storyline and getting emotionally involved, but the other part is like looking at the angles, the lighting, how they're editing it. The narrative is always in the editing. The future. The future of real estate in this industry and what we do. Where do you think it's going to take off as far as video content creation? Do you think that real, more real estate agents should be, uh, if they don't know how to do it, should they be turning to companies like 368 or trying to figure it out themselves, self-taught like us, to try and improve and build that brand? Do you think that the, this kind of content creation is important for our industry going forward? I think it's not just important for our industry, I think it's important for any industry. And ultimately, <clears throat> at the end of the day, if, the, if content creation is your thing, there's a window of opportunity because there's so much now. Right. But in real estate, there still isn't. So do you have any final words for Casey? You know what, what would be amazing, Casey? Hope you don't think this is too presumptuous. Would kind of love to just have a cup of coffee, shake another creator's hand. Spitball, shoot the shit, see where it goes, who knows. Peter has an amazing YouTube channel that he's been building for years now. He's got travel vlogs, he has vlogs where he goes and speaks at different seminars and everything else just like you do. And more importantly too, he just came out with his Netflix uh, special called Stay Here. It's all based on Airbnbs all around the country and how he goes and helps these guys reinvent yeah. their Airbnbs to make it more profitable, more attractive. Really, I highly recommend that you check out his channel and see what he's all about. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Wow, so. what a nice send off. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna get out of here and uh, we'll see you later. Adios. All right. Damn, 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 give a I came here because there's a specific place that I know that you're gonna love. And I know you get a lot of mail, and believe me, I'm not gonna send you any mail. But what I did notice is that you do love candy. I just want to say, as much as I like candy, and I love candy. Since you're moving here, I gotta show you the one spot you gotta go to to get your sweets. So normally what I do in my vlogs is I do not only just luxury real estate where I show these beautiful houses that are up here in the Hollywood Hills area, I also do LA hotspots. I'm trying to show more places, things to do from new businesses, businesses that have already been here, for people that are moving into the area, or have already lived here and just didn't know that it existed. So I did some research, I made some phone calls, and I found the ultimate candy store in Hollywood. Are you ready for this? Welcome to Sweet Baby. So I had 
to do a little bit of research to find this. I made some phone calls. Jonathan is the director, the marketing director for Sweet. He's been here from the get-go. You've been here for about eight years? Just about eight years, yeah. Just about eight years. He knows every single piece of candy in this place. So let me ask oh, you, <laughs> let's say this, how many different kinds of candy do you think are actually in here right oh, now? Oh, it's, it's thousands. Thousands? Yeah. Thousands yeah. of different. So you have yeah. sweet, you have sour, you got chocolate, everything. everything a combination of both. There's actually a really cool part of this place that I've actually never seen in a candy store before, and uh, it's your favorite, right? It's my favorite part of our story. Yes. Okay, so why don't we take a look over there and check it out right now. Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> What's the part of this uh, candy store right here? Why is it so new, unique? Where, where are we standing at? Well, we are in what we call the chocolate lab. This is where you can actually make your own chocolate bar. You can create the ingredients for your own chocolate bar right here. So if I wanted M&Ms, if I wanted bacon, bacon anything. Like, <laughs> you guys have bacon here? Anything you'd like, whatever your desire is for your chocolate bar, we can do it for you. So you pick what type of chocolate you want. And a little note on that too, we only use single source fair trade chocolate that does not use slave labor in the harvest. Large chocolate companies using slave labor to harvest their chocolate. We use no slave labor harvested chocolate. We also add no preservatives to our chocolate. So it is cacao bean, pure cane sugar, and vanilla when it comes to the chocolate. That's now enough. the ingredients you add into it is a right. story. But, <laughs> but the chocolate itself, is is real amazing high quality premium chocolate and you get to come in pick what type of chocolate you want pick the fillings pick your inclusions and in 20 minutes we'll make your bar for you okay and each chocolate bar is a quarter of a pound so they oh are my god significant <laughs> in size do you love chocolate which i know you love do candy you gotta beeline it straight over to the chocolate lab get your own bar Another spot within Sweet. So this is traditional handmade, yummy, what is it? So hard candy. It's all hard candy. It is hard candy, but again, like our chocolate as well, pure cane sugar is all that's in it. No preservatives, no corn syrup. It is all handmade. And then they do, you get, You guys also have some customization to the actual candy too, alongside of just the flavors. And Absolutely, else, right? we're actually able to, to sculpt names or images right into the candy, all done by hand, no machinery. Um, it's created in giant batches of candy and then stretched and we get the little tiny images that come through the candy. You hear that? Casey, nice that candy. Love candy. All right, Jonathan, I think if I stand here anymore, I'm gonna probably get a cavity. So, <laughs> Casey, check it out. This is gonna be great. Jonathan's been here for eight years, like I said, and he's here all the time. So if you ever need some expert advice on candy, I know that you think that you probably know everything. Love candy. This guy knows everything. Thank you so Thank much you for your so time. Thank you so much. Hope to see you soon. Yeah, man. All right, on to the next one. come all the way down to Orange County because there's one more person that I want you to meet. So I had the pleasure of working for this man back in 2016. He is one of the most influential people in my life. He was a guy that got me motivated to get my license and to go big or go home. Not only is he a mentor, a coach, he also has an amazing YouTube channel that is growing predominantly every day. Other than you, he's actually half the inspiration for exactly what I do right here. I want to introduce to you Mr. Tom Ferry. <laughs> All right, so I want to stop by his office, take a peek, see what he's getting into over here. How's it going, man? What's well, good, man? How are you? Is this, the, is this the official welcome, Casey, to Los Angeles video? It is, it is, absolutely. I see that you're doing a video of your own right now. Yes, we are. We're shooting a little Tom Ferry show. For over 20 years, I've dedicated my life to bringing you the very best selling, marketing, and business building strategies to keep your business thriving. Get ready to experience the success you've been searching for. Welcome to the Tom Ferry Show. So what's up, Casey? Thank you so much for coming to the Best Coast. No offense, all my East Coasters, <laughs> but come on, man. SoCal's where it's at. Dude, I can't wait to uh, to see you. Hopefully get a chance to connect with you. And at the end of the day, all of us here appreciate all the work that you've done pioneering and showing all of us right. how to make YouTube spectacular and make it something that 
can help myself and all the clients that we serve, you know, just improve their brand, right? Have people really get to know them. At the end of the day, we do business with people we know, like, and trust, and that's right. what you've shown us. So thanks, bro. All right, so you're gonna be getting into this. You have a few minutes for me to ask a couple questions for yeah, you? Yeah, fire away. All right, let's get into it. Do I need to put my sunglasses on? I'm feeling <laughs> like I'm, you know. All right, so yes, this is what I gotta pay, I always gotta pay homage. So uh, let's get into it, brass tacks. How long have you been doing YouTube for the Tom Ferry company? So I got into YouTube originally in 2007. I was meeting with a buddy of mine from Google. At that time, he was running basically everything on the front page. And I was telling about my blogging experience and my podcasting back in 2007 with Blackberry and others. And he basically looked at me and he said, all that stuff is stupid. You need to get on YouTube. And it was uh, some of the best advice I've ever been given. So 2007, got started, flip video cameras, all that kind of stuff. But it really wasn't until 2009 when I said to myself, okay, this is a thing right. that I will reflect back on a decade from now and say to myself, what was the most important thing I did in my business? Right. And it would be starting my YouTube show and having you know multiple versions of it over the last decade. Just recently, with a, I think it's the past year, six months, that you came out mm -hmm. that you started filming the podcast that you have? Yes. So you've had people like David Goggins, Tom Bill, you on yeah. there, yeah. a bunch of huge names that are on there. And it's not even just about the business of real estate, it's about mindset. It's about accountability, yes. discipline, yes. structure, and stuff like that, which, are, which we can apply to everyday life. <laughs> Yes, 1,000%. <laughs> Here, you put on the Tom Ferry glasses. All right, All right. fair enough. These are really only good. They're not really good for seeing up close, but they're really good for seeing Wow, actually, this, my eyesight's a lot better now. I kind of need to work on <laughs> my, my beard game is very weak. You can get it. You can but get there it. was a time when my I had that same color. All right. Been in video for very long, and there's new ways to reinvent that too. You're going into podcasts, which is now the new trending for yep, audio, for right? Sure. And you're putting a camera behind it, which is huge. Been with some pretty big guys that are in the game so far, as far as influencers and everything else. Do you think Casey would be a good fit for someone to be on your podcast? Anyone of his stature would right. be. I mean, like I've had Gary Vee on my show three or four times. Right. Going back as far as 2009, right? So pre Crush It. Um, and to just watch his evolution has been super fun. Do you think that there is a future for things like this, things like vlogging, not just putting out content, say it's like what we do as realtors, market updates and things sure. like that, but do you think that there's a future for a brand that, especially for the millennial generation coming in, that vlogging could be the new business card? I, I would argue that it already is. Right. If you just if you just pay attention to search today and you look at the sort of consumer trends about how they're selecting a real estate professional, if we're talking about real estate agents specifically, right. you know, so I meet you, Jeff, and you're at an open house and I'm like, man, that guy's got a sick beard. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm still gonna go back and I'm gonna type in, you guys like that? I'm gonna type in, you know, boom, I'm gonna get your information. I'm gonna look at everything I can to understand, like, are you a douchebag or not? Right. Are you a good human being or not? Before we go, because I know you got to get back to what you're doing. Yeah. Do you have anything to say for Casey now that he's here in LA? Jeff's credit card number for Uber. No. <laughs> uh, look, Casey, welcome, welcome to LA, man. I'm sure you got monster plans and you're going to enjoy a fantastic summer. Uh, look, if there's anything any of us can do to support you and your ambitions and dreams, uh, we're all here, man. Super proud of you and thanks for being you. And again, thanks for paving the way. Thank you so much for your time. I know it's valuable. Yeah, I'm out of here, man. Right. Thank you. man that is it that's a wrap that is the end of the vlog thank you so much for taking the time to see this i can't wait for you to show up peter and tom are doing amazing things right now big things as far as video content creation i think that there's so much opportunity between the three of you there could be vlogs there could be podcasts literally anything and i just think a collaboration with that would be absolutely amazing but more importantly most importantly welcome to california buddy welcome to los angeles it's gonna be Friggin' awesome. I'm, like I said, I'm gonna miss the old office, but I am incredibly excited for what is to come with your vlogs and what you're gonna create out here. I just can't wait to see it. And you know what, since we're in the same backyard, I hope that we cross paths all day. I would love to meet you, pick your brain apart, anything that I could to do this and make it better. But that is it, I'm done with my rant. Thank you for watching again, and I will see you next time.